intentional fouls. If an intentional foul is bad enough for a fighter to not be able to continue, we're going to disqualify the guy who intentionally fouled him. If an injury is the guy is able to continue and we believe it's an intentional foul and there has been damage, those are the two things, then it's mandatory to deduct two points. Now let me tell you, two points in a three round fight with 10 points with a possible uh, of 30 points being the maximum possible you can receive. If a guy loses that round and he receives a two point deduction, that means there's no way he can win the fight on, uh, on the scorecards uh, if he just wins round after round. So taking two points from someone is a very serious penalty. And uh, it goes into some other things if that happens. If you're that interested in those, go ahead and find them, read them. These are straight from the Unified Rules or from, uh, you can find them on the Nevada Athletic Commission website. Okay, sometimes we stop the fights. This is a good stoppage. I'm gonna whine a little bit. I had a hard time walking that night after that because Brock Lesnar hits hard and uh, he caught me right in the calf. And yeah, I don't know, yeah. But anyway, that's our job is to get in there and stop the fights when the fighter, that's, that's our main job right there, to prevent the fighter from receiving any unnecessary injury. And uh, basically what it is is when a guy gets dropped, we're looking for them to have uh, some intelligent defense. The fighter is taking steps to improve his situation. So a lot of times you see guys get dropped and they're taking shots and we let them continue. Or some guys that get dropped, they're taking shots and even if they're conscious still, we go ahead and stop the fight. There's no uh, number of punches. People ask me a lot, uh, is it five punches or six unanswered punches before you stop a fight? There's no set number of punches. It's based on what the guy's doing. Guy can be taking some punches and uh, I see he's partially trying to get it together or a guy can fall to the ground, spread eagle, just lay it out. Not like this guy, so this guy's already, uh, or this guy, he's uh, working on getting his guard together and uh, so we're gonna let that continue, see where that goes. Uh, but let's say a guy falls, he spread eagle, and the other guy's coming after him with a shot. I'm not gonna let him take that shot if he's not preparing to try to defend himself. I'm gonna try to prevent that. Uh, it doesn't, an unanswered punch doesn't always have to be another punch back. A guy can be answering it positionally. He can be, you know, trying to push away with his legs. Or a good example is uh, Diego Sanchez and BJ Penn. When uh, BJ caught him, Diego, he addressed the position, he put, he was uh, all four down uh, uh, on his hands. Uh, he was on his, on his feet, but he was uh, bent over on his hands trying to push out of his position. The whole time he was taking shots, but he was working on his position. So uh, I decided to let that fight go on and he was able to recover. All right, types of bout results. Wow, that's a lot to get into. That's a, well, you can win by submission. Uh, Technical knockout, uh, knockout, decision, and the types of decision are unanimous. That's when all three judges judge for the same guy. Uh, the split decision, where uh, the split decision is when the judges score the bout for one contestant and one judge scores the scores for the opponent. Majority decision is when two judges score the bout for the contestant and the other guy scores the draw. There's type of draws, there's unanimous, majority, and there's split. Majority draw would be two of the judges judge the draw, one of them uh, scores it for one of the other opponents. Disqualification, forfeit, technical draw, or no contest. Sometimes uh, in some states, what would be called a no contest here is also called a, a technical draw. Replay. That's something new that we have now, and it's a, it's a new tool, and uh, I'm all for it. Uh, I'm, all, I'm all for anything that we can do to reach the right decisions and have the right guys win um, when we're in there. So uh, what we use it for is in a very uh, limited situation, which is explained right here, is after making a determination, the referee may view a replay if available at the conclusion, immediately after to, de uh, to determine whether the injury was intentional or caused by a legal blow or by a foul. So that he made the determination whether the bout is gonna continue or not, but 
the outcome of the ballot will can be determined by what the replay shows. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the judging. Uh, right there, we got a picture of Gene LaBelle. I love that guy. He's a godfather of our sport right there in, in America. Uh, he had one of the first mixed martial arts fights. I don't know, I think it was that in the 50s. He fought a, a boxer named uh, Milo Savage. And, uh, you know, they, uh, the martial arts uh, community uh, kind of had a... He was voted from the martial arts community to take on a boxer. So uh, he's done a lot. We've seen him in movies and whatnot. He's a great guy. Um, the 10 point must scoring system, what, what we're using uh, to evaluate the, uh, the fighters is effective striking, effective grappling, effective aggressiveness, control of the fighting area, and defense. Those are, uh, those are the, the weighted criteria. We use those criteria kind of as a, as a lens. You look at effective striking first. If you're not able to uh, come to a conclusion from that, then you move on to uh, effective grappling or effective aggressiveness. Uh, a lot of times people think that, ask me why uh, striking and grappling aren't weighted together. Well, okay, let's say striking, if it comes to the judge, that means uh, uh, extremely, uh, if a guy was very successful with his striking, he would have knocked his opponent out. If a guy was very successful with his grappling, he would have submitted his opponent. So what we're judging is when they're not totally successful, but when they're almost, let's say the guy almost knocked him out, the guy almost submitted him. Well, I want to be the guy who got almost submitted. And we're going to do that to each other for five minutes. Let's say Josh and I, we're going to, I'm going to almost submit you for five minutes. I don't want him almost knocking me out for five minutes. So that's, that's why we place that one above that one. Uh, and right now it goes into, uh, explains kind of, uh, of what effective striking is, effective grappling. We're looking for throws, the high amplitude throws. Those are what get points, not just soft set downs and takedowns. Uh, around, uh, these are the judging guidelines. Around the score 10-10, if you believe it's a draw. A 10 round, a 10-9 round is when one fighter did enough to uh, win the round. A 10-8 is if uh, the fighter overwhelmingly just wipe the guy out. Uh, the 10-7, I don't, I barely see the 10-7. Uh, if, if a 10-7 happens, uh, the referee, it might, it could happen, but the referee is really usually going to have to describe and explain why he didn't stop that fight. A 10-7 is a fight that most likely we usually stop him before we get a 10-7, but it could happen. Ah, I heard the referee's fault. <laughs> okay, um, you know, um, so that's one of the things we do is uh, they, uh, right now we're starting, the sport is growing, so uh, there's a lot of room for more officials to come in. Uh, there's a big need for it. Uh, I, uh, I have a seminar where uh, I train other officials. It's not like it's rocket science or a lot to learn, but there's some things that you should know if you want to referee matches. And uh, one of the things I look for when uh, I'm uh, good people who would uh, be good officials, it starts with a love for the sport, um, actually a, a fanatical obsession with the sport. So uh, this place would be a good place uh, to, find, to find officials. Okay, well we'll leave it, referee runs. Anybody have any questions out there? Okay, you have a question? If you have a question, just step right up over there to that microphone. Uh, I prefer to be a question about some of the stuff we talked about today. Uh, if it's a question about, or, or a couple other ones, but I try not to be too specific about uh, matches in particular because I've refereed thousands of matches and sometimes I don't remember them um, all exactly. Yeah, and, you know, I'm, I'm definitely when I'm refereeing a match, it goes into my memory a little different because I'm looking for other things. Matches where I just watched and enjoyed as a fan, I'm able to get it into my brain different because I'm enjoying, like, you know, the beauty of what I'm seeing there.